Well, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, this morning we're at Tinchitamba Wetlands Reserve near Deepwater Bend on the Pine River. Never been here before, heard a lot about it. It's great for wildlife, but today we're not going to photograph wildlife. I'm just using my Nikon D500 with my Nikon 18 to 140mm lens and we're just going to walk and take some nice scenic shots of around the place without a tripod and that's the key today. So let's get cracking. I've been walking for about five minutes now and I've just come across this beautiful scene. Look at it. It's very nice. The boardwalk here just comes in, as you can see on the video, it just comes in and just tapers to the left. And look at these nice clouds in this sort of weather. No need for ND filters because if we try to slow our shutter speed down too much and create like a longer exposure, all these clouds behind us here, they'll just get washed out. Sometimes when we're out in places like this, we might just come out for a walk with our family. We don't want to be lumbered with a tripod. Or you might be on holidays and you're walking around and you're on a tour or somewhere, you can't have a tripod. And you're saying, well, you know, I'm just going to have to pass up the opportunity. Just take a couple of snaps with my phone as a memory. You don't have to. You can use your camera. So when we're out and about without a tripod, there's a few things you have to consider. One. What shutter speed are you going to use? Two, what aperture are you going to use? Three, are you going to set your ISO manually or are you going to set the auto ISO? I know a lot of people, when they shoot wildlife, they set their cameras on auto ISO because we're shooting at very fast shutter speed, we don't have tripods and all that, and we're going to accept an ISO of up to 2000 in our photos. So why aren't we willing to accept an ISO greater than let's say 400 for our landscape photography. A scene like today, your image is correctly exposed, we can easily crank the ISO up to 800 or 1000, but there's no need to do that right now. What I'm saying is we can crank our ISO. ISO is not the killer in your photography. Understand that. It's you. You're the killer in your own photography. If you don't start with a fairly correct exposure, then when you come home and you edit your images, you're going, oh, it's too dark. We're going to increase the brightness of our shot. There you go. That's right there. This is where you're inducing noise. If you took just a couple of extra minutes when you set up your photo, you wouldn't have that problem at home. So how do I set up my camera when I'm in a scene like this? First thing, I shoot in aperture priority. No use, need to use manual settings. I set my white balance. Now if you're shooting RAW, you can set auto white balance. You're shooting in JPEG, choose your white balance. I've actually chosen the sunny balance today. Now, because it's overcast, we might actually change that right now and we'll select cloudy. It's a cloudy day. It'll just give us that extra little bit of warmth in our images. Then, our shutter speed is governed by our aperture at the start. Now, we've got quite a bit of light, so I know we're not going to fall in a too low of a shutter speed. My aperture is f8. Now for everyday photography like this, this is perfect. There's no need to go higher than f8. Keep an eye on your shutter speed. If it drops below about 1 100th of a second, just come down in your aperture. So let's take a photo with the settings that I showed you. So I'll just move over here a bit so I can actually frame it correctly. We come over here and what I want is I just want the, this nice boardwalk here just at the bottom here. Frame the shot. I'm at 18 mils. Beautiful. Look at that. That's so nice. No tripod needed. Let's just walk around here and see what we can photograph. And I'll tell you the settings that I'm using, why I'm using those settings, and just get it a few different compositions. Look at that. Just perfect. How about I bend down like that, eh? Now I'll put the focus point on the, on the tree. Wow. Just beautiful. Now, what happens if I took portrait? That's really nice. That's great. When you're shooting like this, look for a faster shutter speed. And sometimes, if you're going down to a lower shutter speed and you're worried about shakes, then put your camera on continuous flow, press the shutter, and take two or three photos. Normally, I like to take three because what happens, the first one will most likely have a bit of shake if you're in low light and if your shutter speed is quite low. But the second one is normally the jewel in the crown. So you're taking two or three photos. I just like pressing take three. I know the first one's a dud. 
get rid of it and I look at number two and number three. Nine times out of ten, I come home with the shot that I want. Let's keep walking and find something else. So this is going to be our next composition. Look at that. This is just so nice. Now, what I'm going to have to do here, I'm going to have to get down low. You can see there's an ice branch here. I'll give you an idea. I'll actually take a shot at 18mm. Now that looks quite nice, but this is from standing height. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll just come down here and frame it just so that the path starts from about the, the bottom right here. And the way the path is angled, it's actually coming in just a third. We'll take one shot. Well, wow, that looks very nice. We've got this tree here. See on the photo? There's a tree here just leaning down. Let's see the different composition. Well, wow, totally different. But on this side here, I can't get the tree. Look at the difference. This looks nice. The path just leads down, but it's void. Now, I know I've already talked about composition in a previous YouTube video, how composition is king. But I just can't help talk about composition whenever I'm doing videos because look at this scene it is very nice we've got this tree just rolling over the top of the path and look at the next one the path's really nice but there's just something lacking in this I've used this tree basically to frame the image when you're walking around like that then you've got to put it in your mind and say okay I've just got to take a couple of minutes just look at my composition which side is best if you're on a spot like this and you're unsure Take a couple of different compositions so that when you get home, you can actually flip through and go like, yep, oh, this is the one I actually thought that would look good, but look at this one. This one is actually better. So just think about that. Now this ain't landscape, but right here is a very nice spider. Now here, I actually don't need to go to F8. I can come down all the way to F5.6 at 140 mil get up really close focus on the spider oh a bit dark now what I'm going to do is I'll put the camera on continuous low and I'm going to change my metering from matrix to spot I just want to meter for the spider this is a clever little trick because we're at landscape photography so because we're photographing landscape I'd actually set my metering to matrix or in Canon it's evaluative so it's actually registering light for the whole frame but this little spider here it's so small that the camera's metering for the whole surround, showing the spider, as you can see here, way too dark. So now with spot, it's gonna register light on that. Now it might blow the highlights out the back, but let's see what happens, eh? There you go, I took two shots. Wow, look at that. See the difference? Now I know they're in portrait orientation, but they're side by side. Same settings, one's in matrix, one's in spot. Look at the difference in light. Now, before we go any further, I'm actually gonna set my metering back to matrix for the rest of the shots. So we're just coming up to another one of these little boardwalks. This one looks very interesting. Now, as you can see, look at this. This is so nice, but I like the path, but I'm standing shoulder height and I'm not actually getting too much depth. So. This is why I've come in front of the camera now and I'm going to get down low. Now because I'm not using an ultra wide, I'm not going to get the front of the part. Now that looks quite nice. You see what I've done? Look at this shot. I've actually started the part from the bottom right corner and it just tapers in. This is called visualization. So you're actually leading your viewer into your image. But we don't see too much. This shot will definitely look better in portrait orientation. Photographing like this is why they call it portrait because most portrait photos are photographed in this fashion. I'm actually going to photograph this scene here in portrait orientation and show you the differences between the two. So I just took this shot, 32 mils, 1 400th of a second, f8, but look at the ISO, ISO 1400 and people are going, oh, you're using such a high ISO. Well yes, but look, look at the edited photo. That's why I was saying at the start, you shouldn't be scared of the ISO because if it's correctly exposed, you're not going to see that noise too much. And even if you do in a scene like this, it's going to look a bit grainy, natural. That's what I want. Now, okay, I photographed at F8. Now let's see, I'll go back to the same spot 
and I'll bring the camera down to f5.6 and let's see what our ISO is going to be then. So I went back, took another photo. This photo at f5.6, the ISO was only 800. Look at them side by side now. The one on the left, ISO 1400. The one on the right, ISO 800. Can you really tell the difference? I can't. Sure, if I'm pixel peeping now, just a little bit more grain, but that's pixel peeping. I don't pixel peep for landscape photography. I come into 50%. If the photo looks good at 50%, that's it. So we've got three nice compositions already. Three or four, doing good. Now look at this. If you look at it carefully, it might look like much, but if we crop out all the stuff around it, we've got a, one of the main branches leading to the left, and look at the right-hand one. It just does like a, an S-bend, and then it just comes back up. So what we're going to do here, I'll reduce the aperture. I don't want too much depth of field. I'm going to treat this like a portrait image. And you're saying, like, how are you going to treat a landscape like a portrait? Well, I don't want much depth of field this time. I just want to blur the background. And then I'll actually take one at f11, and we'll compare the two. What I'm trying to do, a lot of stuff around, but I'm trying to get this right-hand branch and the left-hand branch here at the top of my image. So both of them come down and actually highlight this area here. That's what I'm trying to do. We just had the sun peek out from the clouds here. And all of a sudden, we had this contrast, bright area, dark area. Can you see how the, the light's actually filtering through? And it's just like these shadows are just crawling towards us. That is so nice. So this was taken at F5. Now I'll go up all the way up to F11. And we'll try to take about exactly the same shot. Now the light has changed slightly, but now look at the images side by side. So our first image was ISO 560, and our second image, ISO 4000. A huge difference, isn't it? But that's because we've gone from F5 to F11. What I'm going to do now is just take a fun shot. I'll set the aperture to F5.6, and I'm going to tilt the screen up here. And what I'm going to do is I just want to get a low down view so I've got live view on this is really nice I've got all this foreground here I'm resting it on my foot here this is just helping the stability look at that that is so different this is why sometimes you have to challenge yourself you know like you're shooting if you've got a pop-up LCD screen like this then see what it's like you can see I don't have a tripod but no tripod so what do I do I just rest it on my foot or you can just handhold and if you handhold, put it in continuous, just take a couple of shots. I'm really happy with this. That actually looks quite nice. But I'm pretty happy already with today. So if we don't find anything else, I'll still go home a very happy man. So this is the bird hide. So this is how I found this hide. I was just walking down the path. The path's in the center. What happens if... I just move slightly this way. Look at the difference. So let's just take a photo. Now, this is the photo, head on. And now, this is the photo where I moved to the right and I've got the path leading from the right into it, the bird hide about a third of the way in. Rules of thirds. Don't you think this is a much better composition? I do. And most viewers would actually like this image much better. Look what is on the right here. It just looks like a little peaky boo hole. You can see the mangroves. Now, we'll come in a bit closer and I'll actually show you what I mean. I've moved up a bit closer. And look, can you see how these mangroves are just framing? And oh, we can actually see the, the other side of the river straight through here. Let's frame it here. But look at this. This is what I was telling you. Can you see we've got like a peaky boo hole through here? And we're seeing the other side of the river. Well, it's 9 o'clock in the morning on this very overcast and very humid morning and we've actually probably done about four or five kilometers of walk and you saw all the images that I took this morning all without a tripod with very overcast light one of them we took ISO 1600 and it came out very well this is why I tell people sometimes we don't need a tripod just about a month ago I did a YouTube tutorial on landscape composition stating the importance of using a tripod but i also state that this was when you go out 
and you're very specific in taking that image. So you're not with family, you're not rushed, you've got all the time in the world and you can slow yourself down to actually use a tripod and take that beautiful scene that's in front of you. But we can't always have a tripod with us. Nothing is perfect when I'm on holidays with my family or sometimes if I'm just out and about. I might just have the camera in the car with me, but I just don't have the time to put the tripod out and to take the photo. So it's always good to know how to take photos with your camera without a tripod. And this was the intention of today's video. Landscape photography without a tripod. Do you need a tripod to take great landscape photos? No, you don't. No. Nah. If anybody tells you that you need a tripod, that a tripod is absolutely necessary, they're telling you a furphy. When I was in Thailand for three years, I maybe have used a tripod a dozen times because a lot of the time when I traveled in Thailand, I traveled with my Thai friends and just didn't have the time or the space to actually carry a tripod with me. So a lot of my photography was done handheld and I still end up with some great photos. So don't think that you need a tripod a lot of the time. Sometimes you can get away without a tripod. If I'm out by myself wanting to capture that amazing scene, I will use a tripod because it forces me to slow down. But that doesn't mean that when I'm out and about here that I'm just going to be rushing. Even if I'm with people, I can still just say, hey, listen, you just keep walking a little bit. I'm just going to stop for a couple of minutes here. Just frame this shot and I'll catch up. All in all today, it's been a great day. Please understand that when I talk about how I actually take photos and I've been taking photos for a long time, that I'm not talking, boasting about what I've done in my past. What I am trying to say is that if you've been doing it for a long time, a lot of things come natural. Like riding a motorbike through a hilly side. You know when you come around a corner, you've got to lean in. Because if you don't lean in, you're likely going to fall over because gravity is going to pull you that way. In photography, you know that certain settings work best for certain uh, areas. Shooting from shoulder height works good sometimes, but sometimes you've got to get down low to actually get that point of view that you're after. That's what I'm trying to say, that you just have to think. And when you're starting photography, and my YouTube tutorials are all about really people when they're starting to take photos. They're just starting their journey and they sometimes struggle like finding which compositions should they use. So these tutorials are designed for people like that to actually help them, to help you on your way to actually capture some amazing images, photos you will really be happy with. Because when we start out sometimes it can be so confusing saying like what am I doing and all that. So these tutorials that I do covering a variety of photography topics are all designed to just help people, people just like you, in your photography walk. So if this video has been helpful to you, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If there's a photography topic that you struggle with, leave it in the comment box below. I answer all comments. I'll most likely do a video on that photography topic. I'm Charles from Charles and Photography. See you next time.